We finally have the PlayStation 5 specs. Now it's time for us to do a PlayStation 5 versus an Xbox because you're definitely going to know which one is better. As of uh, this is Laserbolt and welcome to today's video guys. Today we're doing a PlayStation 5 versus an Xbox Series X tech spec comparison. And there's going to be a versus due to the fact that we finally got the PlayStation 5 specs. And we were extremely excited waiting for them to actually come out. Now that they're out, we could actually do a comparison by by side and determine which is going to be the best console based on specs right now. Now remember, this is only going to be specs. This is not counting games, not counting design. This is just primarily specs. And the reason I also wanted to do this video is to give you guys a better idea of what's more reliable, what's better to be purchased, and also where you're going to be spending your money. Because these consoles are going to cost a hefty amount. And not everybody's going to have enough money to buy both of them, yet alone one. So you want to make the most conscious decision. And this is why this is a series of multiple videos where we'll have PlayStation 5 versus Xbox Series X to give you guys the most informative and most reliable review source for when it comes to deciding which console you're going to pick up. Now, as a friendly reminder, don't want to miss out on awesome gameplay, positive vibes, and overall just a really cool place to chill and relax. Make sure you guys follow us over on Twitch. We stream daily. The link is down below. I will see all of you guys over there. All right, so now it's time for us to bring up the shards. So let's start off with the CPU. So for the CPU on the PlayStation 5, we have an AX Sen2 core at 3.5 gigahertz per second. Now, for the Xbox Series X, we have a 8-core, very similar. Now, the biggest difference here is the 3.8 gigahertz that we're able to get from the Xbox Series S, in addition to the Custom Send 2 CPU, which will be an additional 3.6. Overall, in general, based on the CPU alone, the Xbox Series X is actually winning this battle 1 versus 0. Next up, let's take a look at the GPU. For the GPU on the PlayStation 5, we have a 10.28 teraflop 36 CUs at 2.32 gigahertz. On the uh, Xbox side, we have a 12 teraflop. So right off the bat, Xbox is coming with two additional teraflops. We have a 52 CUS at 1.825 gigahertz. Now, the thing you could probably say is like, why is it that it has more gigahertz on one side on the PlayStation 5, but we have less gigahertz frequency on the Xbox Series X. Now, the reason that is, is because due to the fact that it has two additional teraflops, and it has an increased CUS, it doesn't need to have that high of gigahertz due to the fact that the 12 teraflops would be sufficient to carry it out. With this GPU score, the Xbox is taking a commanding lead of 2 to 0. Now let's take a look at the GPU architecture. This is a custom RDNA 2. Both of them have the same one, so that nullifies each other. Uh, now, top to talk about the memory. For the memory, the PlayStation 5 has a 16 gigabyte GDDR6 256 bits. And the Xbox Series X has a 16 gigabyte GDR R6 as well with 320 beat bus. This is pretty much canceling itself out, pretty much the similar memory. Memory bandwidth, we're looking about almost about the same. We have 448 gigabytes of bandwidth on the PlayStation 5. We have 10 gigabytes at 506 GBs and 6 gigabytes at 336 GBs, which theoretically will cancel each other out because they're almost about the same. Now let's talk about the internal storage. This is actually pretty important for the majority of us because it's going to know how much data we're able to store within this consoles. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about the internal storage a little bit further in the video, which you're definitely going to want to make sure you listen to because it's going to be crucial. So, PlayStation 5, we have a custom 825 gigabyte SSD, which I'm really happy we're looking to SSDs. On the Xbox Series X, we have a 1 terabyte custom NVMe SSD. So overall, in general, these two, we could just tell right off the bat, storage space is definitely the Xbox Series X is leading this one. Once again, taking another lead of a 3 and 0 against the PlayStation 5. Now let's take a look at the I.O. throughout put. Now this is pretty much how long loading times take in games. That's If, you, if you're thinking about that, this is just loading times. Based on how much power this has, it's going to determine how fast your games load. So PlayStation 5 has a 5.5 gigabyte raw and it has a typical 8 to 9 gigabyte compressed. What this means, it's allocating 5.5 gigabytes just for raw speed. Now, the Xbox Series X has a 2.5 gigabyte raw and a 4.8 gigabyte compressed. So basically here, the PlayStation 4 is actually winning this one because it has more raw speed, allowing for data to be transferred much more faster 
than it would on an Xbox Series X. So with this in mind, the PlayStation 5 is getting a one point here. So we're going to have the score three to one, which will give the PlayStation 4 an up advantage on that throughout pastime. Now, after this, almost everything is extremely the same. External storage, USB HD supported. Uh, the thing advantage that I do like the fact that we are getting a 3.2 external HD supports on the Xbox. For me personally, I would actually even give another point to the Xbox Series X, but being the fact that they're both USBs, I'm extremely excited for that. I just like the fact that we are getting a USB 3.2, allowing us to have faster transfer speeds than we would on the PlayStation 5. For me, I would give it a point, but I'm just going to leave it at 3 to 1 right now. The optical drive, both of them are ex the same 4K UHD Blu-ray drive. Both of them will have the same drive. So other than that, we are pretty solid. Something I said earlier that I did want to talk to you was about the expandable storage. Now, the PlayStation 5 has a NVMe SSD slot. Now, we don't know if this is going to be a 4.0 as of right now that, that hasn't been stipulated. The cool thing about this is that you're able to buy any NVM SSD and place it inside the PlayStation 5, which would give us a huge advantage. It's going to give us a ton of advantage due to the fact that we could use any SSD we want. Now, the Xbox X will have a one terabyte expansion card, but you're going to have to buy that exp expansion card separately. As of right now, I think I'm going to give an advantage to the PlayStation 5 due to the fact that you could bring any external SSD NVM card and just add it into the PlayStation 4 without having to buy an expansion card. I'm pretty excited about that and I can't wait to see how this is developing because like if you saw my video earlier when they announced the Xbox One X, I said that we were going modular and seeing that this is going to be a expandable storage device on the side. It does seem like more modular components will be added to these consoles. And there you guys have it. That is the overall overview of Xbox One X versus the PlayStation 5 spec comparison. Overall, in general, I would have to definitely say that the Xbox One X took this win right here. 3-2. to two. By me personally, it was 4-2. to two. But 3 to 2, we have a commanding lead on the Xbox One X. If you guys would like to see more videos like this, let me know what you guys would like to see. Game comparison, uh, you know, design comparison, all that stuff in the comment section down below. I do hope this video does help and make you a better decision on what console to pick up for this coming year. Thank you guys for watching and I will catch you guys on the next video.